Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new vlog. I'm just gonna start this vlog by saying that I predict today is gonna be an amazing day because I don't know if you can tell, but it's extremely sunny and warm outside, which honestly brings me so much joy. It puts me in such a good mood. So yeah, I hope I can radiate some positive vibes to you through this video. Okay, my camera just died. Great start to the vlog. Anyways, what I was saying was another reason that it's gonna be an amazing day is because I'm actually going to a Logitech event later on. And I actually do not know what the event is for. I know that they are releasing a brand new product, but I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna take you guys with me and we can find out together. So I'm excited for that. And lastly, this isn't actually a mic. It's actually the cover for the microphone on my camera, but I wish it was, to be honest. I really want a wireless mic. I just think they look so cool when people have them, when people do their little videos like this. I just want one so bad. I'm gonna get one, guys. I just bit my tongue there. <laughs> Oh god, I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. Anyways, today I'm gonna be working on automating a pipeline that I work with literally all the time. So I've debated automating this pipeline for such a long time, but it is a very complicated thing to automate for many reasons. And I figured that this morning I would actually take you through the planning process for that. So I would kind of give you a little bit of an insight into how I actually sit down, plan, and like strategize, is that even a word? How I actually plan out my code. So I figured that I would basically just share that process with you guys. I'm really interested to see what you guys think of it. And also just to kind of like, maybe give, just give you a little bit of insight into how you can plan out your code. Um, it's nothing complicated. It's literally just a really simple thing, but it's what I find really helps me. So I figured I would share it with you guys and then you guys might have some really cool tips and tricks for me as well. So. Yeah, that's what we're gonna get started with now. So I'm gonna head downstairs to my office and get started on that. So yeah, let's go. So now I'm gonna get started with showing you guys how I plan for my coding projects. And I thought I would start by just showing you the planner that I use because I've been putting up a few Instagram stories like this one here. And I've had so many of you ask me about this planner because you like the look of it. And yeah, I've had this planner for a while and I haven't used it for ages, but I've actually just started using it and I am just absolutely loving it. The reason that I love it is because you've got a really nice page for just writing down notes throughout the day. You've also got a little section for time blocking, which you guys know that I love time blocking. And then you've also got like a separate to-do list. And if you like gratitude and things like that, they've also got some nice prompts here. I don't really use them, but you might find them useful. It's just a really nice, simple yet effective planner. And I've been really enjoying this. So I'm gonna put a link to this in the description box below. Okay, so step number one of planning the coding project is to give our project a name. And it also makes you think about what it is exactly that you either wanna achieve or what you wanna design. I'm gonna just name mine, automate my workflow. Secondly, you wanna think about where are you gonna carry out this project? What text editor are you gonna use? I personally am gonna use Visual Studio Code. We don't need to write this part down, but just have an idea in your head about where you're gonna carry out this project and if you need to download any software in order to get the project done. For me personally, I just need to write my code in Visual Studio Code and then execute it on a high performance cluster. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um, but all of that is already set up for me. But have a think about whether you need to download any software or anything like that. Now, step number three isn't too relevant for me personally, but it might be relevant for you, so I wanna discuss it anyway. And that would be to either design or think about the functionality of your end product. So essentially think about what do you want your product to actually achieve for users or what do you want your product to look like for users? Now you might decide to sketch out like a rough idea of how, for example, your website is gonna look or your app is gonna look, whatever it is that you're developing. And that would give you some kind of structure to follow when you're actually planning out your code. For me, I'm thinking more about functionality. So I'm thinking about what does, or what should my pipeline actually achieve? Step number four, which is actually planning out my code. So I'm gonna start by breaking down my project, like I said, into little pipelines. So essentially I can break it down into three different things. 
I have these three individual steps. What I'm then gonna do is break these down even further. And I'm also going to think about what I need in order to actually achieve this. So for example, if you are looking at starting up a website, do you need to get a web domain? Or for example, if you are developing an app, do you need some kind of special Apple account? I have no idea what I'm talking about with that, by the way, but just really thinking about what do you actually need within the individual steps in order to carry it out. So I like to call these my prerequisites. So I'm gonna go through each step and just write down all of the prerequisites that I will need, if any, for these individual steps. So as you can see, I've gone through and I've wrote down everything that I need for each individual step. The best things about sitting down, really breaking everything down and thinking about all the prerequisites that you're gonna need is that it's so useful. It really actually, without you even realizing it, makes you start thinking about all of the things that your code is gonna need to do. It's also made me think about adding in proper error handling within to my function. The next thing that I'm gonna do is write down in these steps what the code needs to do in order to carry out its main function. As you can see, I have now added in all of the individual steps that I need to carry out in order to achieve the overall goal. Now, the important thing is that you're not only thinking about achieving this goal, but also you're thinking about the next step in the analysis as well. So what I was thinking about here is what does this whole section need to achieve in order for me to achieve the main goal and also move on to the next step. So some prerequisites of this step were that I needed um, a particular date or object. So what I need to do is make sure that the previous step returns that in order for me to feed it into the next step. So thinking about how all of these steps are gonna link together as well. So now rather than sitting down and thinking about this huge project that I have to do, I can actually just focus on achieving just one individual thing within this step. So that is how I plan out my coding projects. It's nothing too complex or anything like that, but it's just really what helps me. I'm actually gonna get on with uh, the first task that I just planned out. So yeah, let's go. We are really looking at, uh, again, we focus on one audience and then we try to do the best possible movement during the day. They don't like to just be anchored to one place. And if they quickly turn into your laptop stand, so it has a little magnet that kind of plugs in. guys it is the morning after the logitech event i am so freaking tired today it's not even funny it is currently actually 9 50 and i have a meeting in 
10 minutes. I'm gonna start by showing you the tote because I literally love this tote bag. She just says a little Logitech thing there. Anyways, I'm gonna shut up about that now because it's literally just a bag. This was actually in the goodie bag. This is a Charlotte Tilbury product that I've wanted to try for the longest time, no joke. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream and this thing is so expensive, which is why I've never tried it because I'm sure that this tub is like 50 quid. I'm gonna keep you updated on whether I like this and where I think it's worth it. I honestly really can't see this tub being worth 50 quid, but I might change my mind. They also partnered with Future Self to give us a few little um, coffee bags. Um, anything else in the bag? Okay, the actual brand new product, which you probably saw in my clips from the event. No, you need to tell me your combinations you want. Look, these are your options. You've got vanilla ice cream protein powder. You've got shorty roll and cold ice cream powder. I don't know. Cherry, no. <laughs> it's simple. Oh, why are you doing that? Because that's what I thought. I'm going to... No, because I'm going to have to take them all out separately or I can just take the whole box out. Okay, you guys have been begging me to show you how I do meal prep, so I figured I would pop it in today's vlog. I do it mainly for convenience because I just got fed up with getting home from the gym at like half eight, nine, and then not having any time to myself in the evenings. Let's get started with showing you how I make my chia puddings. I'm going to link these containers in the description below, but first we add a couple of spoonfuls of yogurt to each container, and then I add in a teaspoon of chia seeds to each of those. Make sure you give it a stir so the seeds can properly swell up overnight. Then I top mine with a little bit of frozen fruit, you can use whatever fruit you like, and a little bit of syrup, and then I chuck in some instant oats as well. This is my boyfriend making his contribution to the meal prep. <laughs> I'm joking though guys, I actually couldn't deal with anyone else being in the kitchen while I'm doing this. Anyway, so this is what they look like at this stage. They look so good, so quick and easy to make as well. Then just to finish off, I add some protein powder to the little lids and they are done. Literally took me 10 minutes and they taste amazing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with making my lunches and dinners. I make eight meals in total, so four different meals, but two of each for me and my boyfriend. So they last for four days. They honestly taste amazing on the fourth day. Uh, but yeah, I only do four because Fridays we normally go out for dinner. So the first thing I do is literally cut up all of my vegetables so they're all done. I've got cucumber, courgette, peppers, um, all of my broccoli, onions, tomatoes, carrots and lettuce. So as I'm cooking I can literally just grab them and it just speeds everything up so much. They are my new prep boxes. I'm gonna link them below as well. Okay so this might get a bit chaotic but first thing I do is start cooking the pasta and just pop a little timer on for that. Then I get started with making the first meal which is gonna be taco bowls. So I'm gonna start with cooking some mints. While they're cooking I also boil some eggs and then I'm just gonna add my seasoning onto my mints. This is the moment where I think I have a moment to breathe and then I have to run back because I feel like something is probably burning. <laughs> I'm adding the vegetables into the mints. Look how easy it is once you've cut them all up. It's honestly so good. Added some beans and sweet corn as well. Once the eggs were done, I always just use the same water to boil my broccoli and then also my carrots as well. Then the last step for the taco bowls was to add some sriracha and cream cheese. So I've done that and also I added the rice off camera. Then I made the started making the tuna for the tuna mayo salad but then my boyfriend came in and took over doing the tuna mayo. So I started on the pasta sauce. So as you see first thing I'm doing is just adding a ton of veg and then adding some pasta sauce. We could only get pasta bake so it's pasta bake sauce but I don't recommend using pasta bake sauce. Use a normal sauce. Our supermarket had literally just been raided that day. Anyways then I'm popping the chicken breasts in the oven. I should have done that at the very start. Then I also added some coconut rice and broccoli and later on some carrots as well into some tubs because we're going to have some seti chicken with that. That's the pasta done. I just need to add the chicken. Then Bonnie came around. This is my boyfriend's dad's dog. She's literally adorable. I love her. Last thing I needed to do was make the satay chicken. So I literally just cut up some of that chicken, 
added some satay sauce and some spinach, popped it into containers with that rice and the broccoli that I showed you before. And then I had to crack the eggs. You know, when you've got to get like the, the shell off the eggs. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so bad at it. Please give me tips because look at this. They did not go well, did they? <laughs> Anyways, I'm done. That's the tuna salad done. This is the rest of the dinners. By the way, I don't know. This lighting makes them look disgusting. But I swear to you guys, they are so good. They taste so good. I'll try and take a better clip of them and insert it somewhere. But yeah, look, all done in the fridge. Literally done for the week. Don't have to cook anything this week. It's literally the best feeling ever. I'm going to try pop the recipes in the description box. If I haven't done it, someone please nudge me. And yeah, this was me begging my boyfriend to feed Bonnie something because she just looks so adorable. Anyways, I hope that was useful. Um, sorry if it was a bit chaotic, but it's really hard to do all of that and film it. <laughs> I just started to open this and then I realised I literally cannot open it without showing you guys. I can't even tell you how long I've wanted one of these. So I've got this for my, uh, like when I move my bedroom downstairs, I'm going to have a little makeup area. So let's unbox it. Yeah, too rare to find cause you are, you are